Hey everybody, Doug here from 2 Plus Stuff. And awkwardly, as I hit... Broke off of there. So, let me figure this out real quick. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. I'm sure I can get this... The audio from there. But yes, I am doing a little bit of hobby today. Uh, let's see. Okay, how is that? Am I able to be heard? <laughs> that was the roughest start to a stream I think I've ever had. <laughs> Just adjusting the mic to pull it towards you. Blank. Oh, okay. I guess we don't have that thing. Uh, I am hanging out today. I'm not feeling too great. And, um, got a lot of sore throat, allergies, sickness, bleh. And so I'm going to be painting up some gits for a bit until I need to go take another sick nap. And I just thought maybe we could hang out and do that together. So, <clears throat> I've gotten quite a bit done on these boys. Uh, I'm very happy with the progress on them. I'll go ahead and move this guy and show you here. Hey, we can hear you. Hey, thank you guys. So, in my sixth day fever haze, I've gotten two units of the squigs almost done um this is uh the leader on big squig which i gave him like a hot orange mask to make it like pop which is really cool and then over here are the boy and grot bounders we've been working on and so yeah just kind of picking it apart the hardest thing right now is to make the basing match which is why the squigs are like 90% there, which that's actually what we're going to start with. Let's do that. <clears throat> okay, so tell me everybody in the chat, I see some people already did, what are y'all working on? So let me show you how I do these bases real quick. Big fort of dark purple. Here's bright jade. Apologies for bumping the mic. It's in a weird place. <laughs> so the way I do mine with these particular ones, it, it's partially because um, I want it to match the ones I've already done that were already built. But essentially I'm gonna take some dark purple and that's gonna act as our main color. And we're going to do a poor man's two brush blending here. By poor man's, I mean just do a bad job of it. We're just going to dip the brush randomly in blue and just kind of stipple out. And this is how we get some of those different color textures and stuff like that. And then when this is dry, I'm going to dry brush it with a, uh, a gray to make it look like it's a cave floor. And so those colors will just faintly pop through and it looks great. Ready and Forge, hey buddy, how you doing? And the gray is the great equalizer that uh, brings all the bases together, so even if as you're mixing them you get a little bit brighter, purple here and there, some weird turquoise stuff, it all comes back together. Uh, let's see, been painting my wife's sleeves to darkness with that Demon Prince theme. Old Regiment Warriors on the table today. Sweet. I, um, so I picked up a bunch of Chaos Space Marines, uh, because I, I want to try getting back into 40k here locally. I just had a really rough time trying to learn it with, uh, Eldar. Well, and Gene Steeler Cult, to be honest with you. So I switched to Chaos Space Marines because I, I just needed something that I could survive. Like I, I got really tired of little weak dudes who I kept pulling off the table. And so, um, yeah, I got Chaos Space Marines. I did the Combat Patrol box. 
a hell drake and another troops unit so that i could do two troops in an hq kind of thing um my eventual goal is to get a collection that's a recreation of my sons of horus 30k army <clears throat> and um have that as like black legion so like it's a war band that was there it was at uh specifically Cthonia, which is what my army is themed around and uh yeah just kind of bring them out into the setting so then having like for example the only thing i don't really have a good one-to-one -one equivalent for is bikes i know chaos space marines have bikes but they're they're ugly <laughs> only only uh a true veteran of the long war meaning a player who's been around for forever can appreciate those bikes so i'll probably replace those with like warp forge monsters or something like that just something to kind of keep the vehicle theme ish going but this is twisted over the years all that to say i'm sorry i got on a way big tangent uh i got on there because they use the same demon prince kit and i'm excited to get that one i'm actually going to have thematically be my 30k warband warlord canonically quote unquote uh, ascends to demon prince and that's why I'll have him instead of a equivalent model. So yeah, that's the idea. Um, not too bad. Actually painting up a Wurgog right now for my big wall. Sweet. I love to hear it. Let's see. Uh, my bank account is already having seizures because I'm seriously considering getting that sweet Ionis Cryptborn model. Yeah, he, um, the amount of raw sexual magnetism of that model is, is a bit, it took me back as well, I understand. <laughs> um, Willie, hey, how you doing, buddy? I'm just sitting down to build the new Art Boy kit. Tell me how it goes together. Oh, sorry, just the big boss. Please, please tell me how it goes. I, I'm so curious. I uh, One of the things, and I have no technical experience with this, but I love seeing how models are designed to go together. Because for every, you know, model that's like a, every 10 spirit hosts where it just makes people reconsider why they like this hobby, there's the Stormcast Chariot, which is one of the most fun models to build I've ever built. Like it just goes together so smoothly. It does everything it's supposed to do. And it looks terrific, like very early. Like you can see it coming together as opposed to some vehicles where you're you're building the inside of the Land Raider that no one's gonna see. And so you're not really, you know, you look at the box and you don't see it. So you're like, I don't understand what I'm building. So you have no context for what it should look like. None of that. Um, and I think that spawns from, well, I was going to say when I was a kid, but, uh, my Instagram feed would betray the fact that it's well into adulthood. Uh, I love Transformers. Not necessarily just the intellectual property of Transformers, like, I certainly I don't like the live action movies, but, um, like, the models, sorry, the kits and toys as a kid always fascinated me with how someone designed a thing to be two things and to be reasonably simple to change between them i was just like that that's awesome and so i actually watch um my instagram is filled with content creators who just collect like retro old metal transformer toys and they just slowly transform them because they're showing you how the designers thought about like space these are some of the first toys that ever used surface area like if you print on multiple surface areas and then have the thing unfold and rotate the arms all of a sudden you have more creative space to, to paint and, and that kind of thing it's cool anyway i don't know how, oh yeah i've got there because we're talking about models anyway so i think that, that kind of carried over into models as far as like i love seeing like the cad files of like how all these things are supposed to come together Ugh. Uh, let's see. 
I'm gonna listen to Doug's video on I own it. Oh yes, 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 yes. I fell a little bit behind where I wanted to be with recording simply because of my my throat. I don't have, I can't boom my voice like I need to into my mic normally. When I get all scratchy like this. But yes, I'll absolutely do an Iona's Crip Horn video. I mean, that's a deep cut back to like early AOS lore. I think the only bigger Hail Mary would be Corgus Skull. Which I never understood. He got his own novel, and it was a banger from start to finish, in my opinion. I liked it. It had some strength and weaknesses, but it was a good book overall, I'd say. And then he just, like, got ditched into history. It's like, no. Oh, Morgan Murray, thank you so much. Toss a coin to your favorite streamer. Hey, thank you so much, buddy. I really do appreciate it. Uh, as always here, if you throw something in the tip jar, you get to direct the conversation. So, Willie, what would you like to talk about, my friend? What's got you excited in the hobby or I, I guess something you'd like an honest opinion on or something like that? We can build this world together. I have the lo-fi covers of classic songs playing right now. Yeah, I I decided to limit how much work I put into these uh, the squig herd because they were built somewhat roughly, somewhat roughly. Let me say that. Um, I'm gonna work on either some evocators on Dracoline or Cruel Boy Hobgrots. Nice, that's red. Hey, Doug, I have an extra hardcover of the Grum Brindle novel. It's yours if you'd consider covering it. I... Okay, so... Tell me about... Sell me this character. I don't know who it is. <laughs> I know Grum Brindle is, like, the quote-unquote white dwarf, right? But I, is he an actual character? I thought he was just, like... I don't know. A mascot for the magazine. Please, tell me about Grum Brindle. I know he had a model that became a poor man's go trick for a hot second, but then went back to Grum Brindle. <laughs> so that was fun. Oh no, wait, he was a slayer. That's what he was. Yes. I'm trying to think of what when he came out. I remember seeing that old, kind of odd looking model he had for a bit. Well, there was one white dwarf where they painted up the Slayer at, and said, like, this is Grom Brindle. We're like, no. That was an early one, though. I think back when they still did the little, I don't know, one-third of a magazine marketing ad things. Basically, a dwarf hero who gets reincarnated by Grugni over and over again. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Interesting. And is it a a fantasy battles book that was reprinted, or is it an Age of Sigmar book? I'm curious. Oh, it has to be Age of Sigmar, right? Because Grugni wasn't a deity with whom we could re resurrect. <laughs> Let me consider that one. I have about three books coming down the pipeline right now, but I am definitely not opposed to that. I might just buy it as an audiobook or something like that. It's kind of it tends to be how I I listen to more stuff now and nowadays. 
I had to start getting into it for the Horus Heresy show, and uh, it's it's become good. Like I used to not like audiobooks because I really don't like audio dramas, and I was kind of equating the two, but that's not accurate. Still can't do the dramas though; too much noise, which makes me sound like an incredibly old man. But new soakers are made. Um. He appears to be. He appears to all the different factions of Dwarven in times of need, saves them in different ways. Oh, that's cool! So after this, we'll do a quick drive rush of the gray to kind of bring the bases together. And then I just go around the rims with some black. As far as painting them goes, if I wanted to, I could do go in for like, probably some highlights on the teeth just to make them pop a bit more. But like I said, this is, this is a pretty rough kit from being secondhand. I tend to not spend a lot of time on that. Old world, dwarf lore, physically crafted. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so it is old world? Hmm. is an interesting premise for a hero. Granted, it's, you know, an entire faction called Stormcast Eternals, but that is cool because it is dwarven unique for them. Hi, bud. Hey, Robin Mankiller. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I have a question for the chat, actually. Do any of you guys play Relic Blade by Sean Stutter? I actually um, was considering doing some like get started videos, perhaps tutorials, that kind of stuff uh, for it. I had the good fortune of meeting him at Adepticon last year. And I would just love to know more about the folks who play his game. If you don't know what it is, it's it's like a uh, it's a skirmish game, of course, but it um, it is more like D and D combat. It's an adventure combat thing rather than like two war bands line up and punch each other kind of deal. So it's it's its own thing. It's its own cool fantasy setting and stuff. He's an, he's his own artist. He's like a Renaissance dude. He's his own artist and publisher and all these kinds of things. Dude's insane. Uh, let's see, Doug, have you read God Eater's Son? Um, Daniel, I just downloaded it. It's next in my queue, uh, but I will report on it when I finish it. I actually have my buddy Brent uh, from Rolling Ones. He finished it and said he's like i don't like most aos books because they're generally anticlimactic but uh this book was amazing so i was the one where i was like oh i gotta go buy that so yes i got that on on credits i'll give that a listen here pretty soon i just finished uh i'm terrible at this book's name because all the all the gloom spite stuff sounds the same what's the name of the book Bad Loon Rising by Andy Clark, a Zograt and Scrog audiobook. Have any of y'all listened to that? I 
freaking adored that book. I got it just because I was like, oh, you know, I'm getting into Gloom Spite, and I've already listened to the book called Gloom Spite, and I really did enjoy that one. Um, it just seemed like hell rolled over a town. It's very human-centric from their perspective and stuff, but uh, this book is a dual perspective. I mean, it's always third person, but, like, it follows the titular Skagrot and... Scrog is like a uh, rock herd Trogoth that just follows him. And he's been touched by the clammy hand and the bad moon falls wherever he goes. It's his epic story. Oh, man. Now, nice and relative, though, Hobgoblin from Gaslands Crater will be good. Oh, yes, I am going to cover that. I I can't remember when they said they were going to do an update. For some reason, I thought it was the end of October they were going to release the, like, the advanced rules. Whatever, so people could like widely start playing, because I know the play testers are. But given the nature of what I do, I try to be too, you know, cautious about what I go and just chat idly about online. So I know they're play testing. I don't know when the book release is, but you can absolutely believe that it'll be covered here. I actually <clears throat> had a eight millimeter army printed for me just so I could do Chaos Warbands, like Path to Glory style, old school, um, on the tabletop. So like when it's eight millimeter, it's it's like a Warcry board. <laughs> um, and it's pretty rad, gotta say, I like it. I haven't, um, they're still kind of like on their little plastic sprue things as I as I wait to figure out exactly what I want to do but yeah it's AOS okay thank you I appreciate that uh, volcano hello guys everyone hyped for legions imperialis uh, I am I am I Hyped is the right word, because I'm excited for it. It's just like the lack of communication uh, is not fun. But whatever the delays are, I, I assume they're good. I don't know. They didn't tell me. They were just like, give us the book back. And so I did. But that's about it. Let's see. Let's... Let's get the gums real quick. But yes, I absolutely will be talking about uh, Hobgoblin, because it's the kind of thing I'm into. More and more. I just really am getting to adore indie games over major publishers. Also because you get to support people. Like, it's way cool when, like, you see a guy who started one, you know, a project at one, we'll say, level. Meaning, like, maybe it was just a hobby or something like that. And to follow them along when they, like, go big or, um, like, develop new game content, that kind of stuff. Oh, I love it. I do that with um, my guilty pleasure, my wife and I, to be honest, is... They used to be BuzzFeed Unsolved, and then they started their own YouTube channel called Watcher. I don't know if any of you guys watch this. It's basically like true crime mystery. Uh, they do a lot of ghost story stuff. That's kind of what got them famous, but we don't watch it for that. It's just two guys, comedy pot, uh, show where they just talk about weird history stuff and or uh, go to haunted places and have fun. It's a humor thing, so it's not really about the... The place or whatever, it's about, you know, them being knuckleheads to one another. Anyway, watching them along their journey was, like, our first time as adults being like, how can I, like, I, I need to know that they know that I love what they do. <laughs> that was years ago when they started doing that. Um, I'm 
just posted a pic of what I am up to this morning in the hobby corner. Okay, I'll go check that in in a bit. Volcano, sick and tired of GW's antics concerning the old world. So this single hobgoblin book will be more cost efficient. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. The most powerful lesson I have learned as an adult is if you don't like a game, you don't have to play it. And um, I don't mean game in this context of like Warhammer or Relic Blade or, you know, like the literal game game. What I mean is the sales game, right? The, if you don't like the FOMO stuff, net just decide I'm never going to buy it. If they want to sell it, they can release it separately. That's kind of how I am. I refuse. I think it's a terrible business model. Family starts being crappy. You don't have to play that game. You know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. Like, kind of a self-empowerment version rather than just being a raging a-hole. <laughs> Although there's elements. Sometimes you have to tap into your inter inner New Jersey uh, street rat to set personal boundaries. <laughs> um... I mean, Ash Waste bot got hyped to build the desert board, and you invested that in Gaslands. Yeah. Actually, we have a Gaslands guy here locally who I've asked him multiple times, do you want to play? He's like, oh, I love that game. I was like, okay, let's play, man. And he's the one who, like, organizes a lot of the uh, AOS and 40K stuff at my friendly local game store. And he keeps talking about how much he likes it, but every time I'm like, dude, let's roll dice. And he's like, uh, I'm like, okay. Do you like this game on paper? That's totally cool. I'm a, I'm a, a guilty of this for many games. Carnival being the biggest one where it's like, there's no way I can get a game in reasonably anytime soon. But I like that game. And I want it to succeed. So I will delude myself into thinking that I will have friends who will enjoy it with me. <laughs> um, Elric... How's your day going? It is going. I am um, well, just a smidge under the weather, but I thought we would get some good painting in. Hang out with you kind folks before I went back with the rest of the day. One page rules now truly has me. I adore them. They are the nicest people to work with. Cannot praise enough. Um... I like a little bit more to, to my games personally, um, but I cannot argue that that is single-handedly one of the, the absolute best like miniature for game formats. I actually asked them like, hey, would you guys license this? Like if I bought the rights to make a one page rules game and modified it to do what I wanted it to do, would you guys be into that? And they're like, eh, we're thinking about it. And I was like, okay, well, you know, come back whenever. Because I would want to do it something like under their banner. Like I don't want to steal rules or whatever. But uh, I was like, you guys have something real freaking special by just making the most absurdly accessible miniatures game rule set ever. Like are you, what? And it's a freebie. And it's, it's, it's a thing I always... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to start waxing poetic. I tell people a lot. Everyone's so precious about like, well, if I make content, what if somebody else steals it? If I start, you know, like an online digital course, what if somebody copies it and puts it up on like whatever online? It's like, you know what? They're going to. They're going to. But you always give away stuff for free because then people are like, this guy. And that's exactly how I feel about them. One page rules. These guys, they make models, but they want me to play games. I can oblige that. <laughs> I stand that. Here we go. Got our garrots painted. At least the basics. Uh, model of 
diagnostic rules to cure for that. Yep. And that's actually uh, Relic Blade. They do sell models, of course, but like they are a model agnostic game inherently. So I was like, I've been playing a lot of those kinds of things. Um, yep, yeah, Sega is a great one by Black Sight Studios. I can recommend if that's something you're into. That one's more like, um, think the movie Armageddon. Or sorry, not Armageddon, Annihilation. Totally different. <laughs> Totally, totally different vibe check there. Uh, Annihilation happened in Lord of the Rings. It's basically the idea. So there's a bubble field that corrupts and mutates things and makes them all wiggity. And you play as a warband going through that. And it is pretty dang sweet. But yes, it is designed... To be completely models agnostic you can make units of just a dude or three or whatever you want to do big beasties that one i will say does lean heavy into the skirmish side of things it's played on a two by two which so is a relic blade which i actually i love that board two by two is the best it works on any coffee table in the world and any one of us in the States, at least, I'm sorry, everybody overseas, this is not true for you. But like right now, I could walk into Lowe's or Home Depot, go to their wood section and get a two by two board and immediately start same day making tur a, a new board for our game. Um, the accessibility of that is, is just dope. Like they just have shells of them. So I can big grab a nine and be like, I'm going to do a tundra board. I'm going to do a desert board. Okay, what else needs to be? There we go. But yes, one page rules is awesome. They're like the easiest people to support because they're so nice. I'm gonna do the same thing for here for this loom boss as I did for the one on the giant squig. I'm going to Give him the, the scary orange helm to make him like pop and stand out. Look at me! Uh, let's see. When the list became real, I'm all in. Oh, like the list builder, you mean? Okay, wait. Uh, model agnostic rules also directly support independent model creators? Absolutely. Yep. And, you know, I mean, that's... It's interesting, like, I met a person once who was mad at GW um, for their policies that you couldn't have third-party models. While at the same time, um, this person refuse to play other games because he's like well why would i buy any other models than games workshop because if i know that i like games workshop everything else is a waste of time and money right because you can't use it at those events and i, I first of all I was like that is a very small perspective like not even about warhammer not about gaming that's that's just like a, an outlook on business that i can't understand but <laughs> but beyond that um, it's like, yeah, no, there's, there's so many artists, like, for G-dubs to have artists to do these things, that means there is an entire industry unto itself outside of them, of people developing these skills that then they can then take into the industry, right? Um, we didn't just graduate as miniature design artists before there was a need for them or an industry for them. 
And so it's just very interesting. It's like, why don't you want to help anybody else? What is it? I don't know. I embrace that kind of stuff. It's like, do whatever you want, man. I've never had somebody do a proxy to me personally that I thought was unreasonable. And by unreasonable, I mean, like, it's not about the base size. It's about did they duct tape a potato to a base kind of a thing. Like, you got to try. Everyone I've seen has tried in some capacity. list to use predators aliens engineer oh cool oh from the franchise alien okay i got you i got you i'm following now i adore that movie let me ask you this if you're a fan of of um obviously what is it the colonial marines and stuff like that. How do you feel about Prometheus? I personally love Prometheus. Whenever there is like uh, one of those like get to know you questionnaires and it's like, what's a movie that you like that everybody else hates? That is my default answer. <laughs> the amount of visceral hate that some fans have over for Ridley Scott over that particular film is both hilarious and sad. Okay, now when I do uh, stuff with contrast, usually it's just to block out the colors. So I'm gonna come back here with some reds and some browns to kind of differentiate those some more. Sounds like tunnel vision. Yeah, eh, that's what it was. It was just, but but this same person, um, I'm sorry, I had to kind of got distracted and finish that story. The same person was, we were playing a demo of bolt action, I think. And somebody was explaining to me how the dice mechanic works as far as like randomizing activation. And this this person who like I refuse to buy any non GW models was like deeply captivated. Like he just wanted to know about that because I and I agree. I think it's probably one of the coolest mechanics ever. Um, but there was just something in him. Was like I just refuse to try other games. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, if that's the intellectual property you like, man, you do you, but just be quiet when it comes to the complaints. I don't know how else to say that nicely. <laughs> you want to be a fanboy? That's cool, man. I support you. Act like one. <laughs> that's just me being facetious, but... Okay. Visually, Prometheus was good. It was just some incoherence in some places. I watched a version where someone put together all of the the marketing media, like the kind of underground guerrilla marketing that they did for the movie, put that in order, and then restored cutscenes and presented the entire thing as one solid film. Unfortunately, it ballooned the, the watch time. However, it was a exceptionally better film because you learn all their little stupid guerrilla marketing things that they expected people to kind of put together. Um, tell a story of like the old man who's in this ship, like Wayland, his arrogance and stuff. Oh man, it was so cool. Have you played Vince's games? Rain in Hell or Space Station Zero? I have them both. They're sitting right in front of me, and I have a friend. We are going to be playing them here pretty soon. Uh, unfortunately, I have not been able to. I had one guy who was interested when I was back in Iowa City, um, and then our, just our schedules never really seemed to work out, unfortunately. But finding a second player has always been... It's difficult around here. Again, a lot of the stores around here are folks who are... 
Um, not just supportive of GW. I won't say it's it's not like that other person I was talking about that was years ago. Um, I would say the stores around here in the greater Des Moines area, people love to celebrate their local game stores, which is good. But if your local game store is like, I buy GW stuff, and I've never heard of X game or X is whatever you're interested in, models agnostic thing, it's rough because at that point you're trying to sell the game owner you're not trying or the store owner you're not trying to sell the game and your experience will vary greatly with your particular friendly game store owner One of the things I was talking to um, Greg with Electa Studios, the guys who did, uh, they published quite a few games um, with uh, the Blaster Magazine. One of the things he was saying for Hobgoblin was that they've been talking to small business owners, store owners, that kind of stuff. And the idea of like the implications in sales marketing of, of miniature agnostic games for some reason just isn't hitting like local stores. So what I mean is like it it makes absolute sense for your FLGS to carry Hobgoblin and Rain of Fire or sorry Rain in Hell and Space Station Zero because they're already selling models for those. All this does is add more value to their inventory, but they don't generally speaking know that that exists. He's like, yeah, in our interviews, we just keep bumping into people that are like, how is something like that possible? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? What do you want to mean? What do I mean? It's like that kind of conversation just over and over again. Do you know the back lore to help you understand Prometheus properly? Oh yes, no, no, I I understand. Yeah, saying um, it's my favorite movie and nobody else liked it uh, to me is not the same as saying I don't understand why everybody has a problem with this. It's like it was poorly done. It was poorly executed. Grandiose idea, poorly executed. But I say that as someone who still likes it. Okay, guys, mess. Okay, I'm gonna do that little piece of scrap metal in the corner there with the same orange that is on the boss's helmet to kind of bring him and his mount together a smidge. Hello, just saw your live stream. Hello, Duminator407. Are you uh, a follower? Do you, do you play AOS or 40K or anything? Also, if anybody has something they want to talk about. I actually didn't see if Wargamer Willie, did you say something after I asked you forever ago? <laughs> I'm scrolling up. I'm not seeing it. Oh, wait, you did ask me a question. How's my Horus Heresy coming along? I'm so sorry, Willie. Um, well, good and bad. So the Horus Heresy army is coming along really well. I now have uh, 3,000 points of a Black Reaving army or Pride of the Legion, depending on if I want to be loyalists or traitors. Traders are black raving loyalists are part of the legion. Um, unfortunately, there was actually a Horus Heresy event going on this weekend that I was in that big rush to paint for, and then I fell ill and I'm not feeling well, so I didn't go actually. So a bit of a bummer there. That's the bad part. But I still have the army, still intend to play it. Uh, it's going to be on streams over on Improbable Wargaming. Um, and I like it. It's it's very well done. 
I was talking earlier, really, I don't know if you were here. Um, I'm actually doing some Chaos Space Marines in 40k, and I'm going to have them be the mirror image, as if they just kept this warband going. So there's some model replacements i got to figure out, because there's just not one-to-one -one transfers. But I'll figure that out. see. I shop at a local Warhammer shop about a mile from me in California, but I enjoy supporting mom and pa shops too. Oh yeah. Putting together some leagues of Votan. Heck yeah. Someone asked me a question about them in the comments video. What was it? It was so, it was very odd out of nowhere. I had no context for it. He asked if Cthonia was somehow integral in the development of the Leagues of Votan. Do you know anything about I, I I just honestly responded to him. I was like, dude, I don't know anything about Leagues of Votan. My 40k lore is pretty weak. I mean, for the newer stuff. I know like the classic lore for most of the armies. I could probably fumble a pretty good presentation on Eldar and their history and but when it comes to the newer stuff, I'm a little bit out of the loop. But he, but here's the thing: is he asked that video. Here, sorry, he asked that question on a video about the Horus Heresy book, Siege of Cthonia. So I was like, I, I, I don't know, man. Uh, if they are relevant, it's at least ten thousand years away from what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was just very perplexed. I think that was me. Was it you? That would be awesome. I If there's someone who knows, like anyone in the chat, do you know? That would be freaking awesome. Because I know that they do that. They do carry planets forward, right? Because wasn't Necromunda something special before? I could be overanalyzing that. But if anyone knows, please tell us. Like, I am just very out of the loop when it comes to that stuff. I don't I mean because like some factions have come out since I have left 40k I mean like lore wise like stop kind of following it actively so for example like since I left the Sisters of Battle came out I wasn't playing it around then and what else Sisters of Battle there was another one Leagues of Votan uh, maybe it was maybe it was an Ashway skiing or something like that. But um, they, I was having a conversation with someone. They were like, "Oh yeah, this is a totally recycled planet," and kind of build this lore out of there. And I was like, "Oh snap! I had no idea." Built, just built the new gorgers from the Warcry box. Ah, uh, yeah, I actually. Um, sent mine over to Brent so that they could do a battle report with them. But, uh, yeah, those are some killer models. The only thing that I don't understand is the scale. Like, if you put those gorgers next to a current gorger, they're bigger, which, you know, whatever, scale creep, that's that's not whatever. But even internally within the kit, I, I felt that they were, like, all different kinds of things going on. Am I misremembering that or was I thinking of a different thing? Please tell me. I just remember thinking like, huh, this, when you put all of them plus the actual Gorger model next to each other, it looks, this is like a, this is a big diverse family. I like it. <laughs> Did the question come up because of the Cthonian, was it? Berserks being a unit in Votan. Oh, that's interesting. 
is there a unit called the Chthonian Berserks? That would make absolute sense, and I would see the point for that question. Like, well, the point of that question, that was really dumbly said. I would understand why that would raise that question, especially in the campaign video, because I would be looking... If there's a unit called the Chthonian Berserks, I would be looking at that too, yeah. But I, uh... I will give you... No, it's not a spoiler alert. Things don't go well for Chthonia. <laughs> it doesn't look good in the 41st millennium. <laughs> I noticed that too. Yeah. I don't know the lore behind why. It's definitely interesting. So, to my knowledge, okay. If you really don't want to hear a single thing about the Siege of Chthonia, please tune out for like two minutes. I'm just going to ramble off real quickly what happens. At the end of the book, um, the Dark Angels show up, and their job is just to annihilate any kind of traitors. They do not negotiate. They are the Emperor's Inquisitors, where the Space Wolves are his hounds, kind of a deal. And they come to Chthonia, presumably to aid the Loyalist, but really they're just there to, to bomb the core of the planet. Chthonia's done. Now, it doesn't explode like the system explodes or whatever. Instead, it's like seismic charges that make the planet kind of like collapse unto itself, like tectonic fissures and that kind of stuff. So to my knowledge, at the end of the book, the planet physically is there, which means if it's there, it can be mined, which is, kind of, I guess, kind of what comes to my thought process. I couldn't answer that in the comments because... I don't want to spoil it for people watching that video in series, but that's my understanding of the situation. I only knew about them because some kit bashed them as Hearthguard Berserker allies. Oh, that's rad. Lo-fi blue in the background. Yeah, somebody noticed. I got all my faves here. <laughs> Okay, so what is next? Probably teeth and spikes. Yeah, okay. Again, just blocking out colors. Not worried about making it look pretty. That comes later. I'll post a pic in the Discord. Hey, thank you! I'd love to see it. I know that um, Tom from Warhammer Weekly did similar conversions like that because he has like a uh, uber dwarf list where it's just like the different sub factions or whatever, and it looks incredible. And I just have always really respected him for the amount of work that goes into something like that. Also, for always talking about competitive stuff, man, that guy can paint like a mofo. And I am using Monument Abbey's Dark Ivory. Um, let me ask the chat. I know it's a little early, but any of y'all planning to go to uh, Adepticon this year? Someone, some Chthonian genes and archived it. Hmm, that could be interesting. There was quite a bit of the population that, well, I say quite a bit. There's about a thousand people that survived the entire thing who were on 
planet side and made it like out out. Um, I suppose any one of them could have been progenitors. Did they count the Leagues of Votan as a Xeno species? I thought I saw that once. I'm betraying how little I know, but... I, uh... Never claimed to. <laughs> okay, Horn. I don't know what I was expecting. Am I the only one underwhelmed by the Goth Rockers Christmas song? I do not know anything about the Goth Rocker thing. I see it and my body wants to turn into a singularity with cringe, but I love the the idea. I mean, certainly I love like the old models or whatever. Is it a real band? And it, or is it like a GW promotional thing? Can someone start me off there? <laughs> I should clarify, I'm not cringing because they are bad. I'm cringing because the size of those heads makes me feel like they're going to peel over, keel over and just like concuss themselves. What's Akon? Akon is a Depticon here in the United States in the greater Chicago area. but everyone's event focuses are going to be this year. I think I am going to look into uh, some AOS events for myself this year. I did Conquest last year. But I think I'm going to switch it up a bit. I mean, I say I did Conquest. That was my big event, and it took over the day where I would have needed free to be able to participate. Hello, hello, hello. Supposedly, oh, here we go. The Leagues are common ancestry with the Imperium, but it's been hundreds of years they're classified as Xenos. Hmm. Rude. <laughs> Interesting. So they're so... But ratlings aren't. That wasn't me arguing with you. It was just like kind of, I mean, I, I believe what you said, but I'm just trying to put that in perspective of other stuff that I know. Forever, forever, we're riding the squeaks forever.
Uh, that's what happens when you, I'm gonna go free event. That's not far from my house. I had, so Adepticon last year was the first time I went just as an attendee. I, mean, I it was my first time going and I decided to go as an attendee. Um, and I had an amazing time. I decided to take it slow, not do too many events, not do too many painting things. This year I am definitely going to do more now that I'm a little bit more familiar with the uh, scheduling system and stuff. Um, I'm still planning to do the Youngbloods AOS event. Um, I just had so much stinking fun last year. But I'm also considering uh, participating in more like indie game stuff. Um, I've talked about, uh, I said it during the review, but I'll say it here because I definitely meant it. Uh, I've definitely been asking and emailing in about running Torch and Shield, which if you don't know is the skirmish game I was just talking about here on the channel uh, last week. Um, it's kind of a Mordheim-esque dungeon crawler thing. I just, I think it's great. And uh, I think that they could do quite well if they had a little bit more visibility. So I was like, hey, let me reach out to the Akon guys and we'll see. They're in Australia, so like, they're not coming up. But I was like, you know, maybe I can run the event for you. I can demo it we can tweak it to make it a fun experience for a group and at least get the name of the game out there so we'll see i might be doing that i'm not going to be like running a booth or anything like that though i didn't uh doug was not prepared to commit to that Oh yeah, she's a beaut. Now, of course, we haven't done the last little highlights and uh, washes, so the rims of all these will have some wash, probably sepia on the bottom, just to kind of bring them into the red a bit. Yeah. Here, let me share this with you guys. If you are interested, where is it at? Just one sec here. Boom, there we go. That should be the link to the uh, playlist if anybody wanted to listen to that on their own. It's got some bangers, man. Their version of Creep, I listen to like on repeat in the mornings while I'm drinking coffee. further somewhat different in their ab human counterparts when they first adapted interesting okay i mean you know i you don't gotta sell me hard right i'm definitely i've never been one of those nerds who's like um but actually you said this back in 1979 rick Priestley, after just having snorted a rail of cocaine said that there's no way ab humans could do you know what i mean like you get into that thing where you're like okay bud stuff changes i don't know what to tell you probably should have done this part 
much sooner, but I, I guess I just didn't know what color I wanted his robes to be. I have two on here. I have black and my normal uh, teal that I'm going to be doing. But I have found contrast as a fantastic base for those colors, and so... I throw down some Plague Bearer Flush, highlight it with Ogroid Camo, and then for the shirt, it's a Kelly and Green and the Jade colors from Monument Hobbies. They call them Jade. I always think of Jade as being much more green, but I don't know. That's definitely from like a video game understanding of Jade. <laughs> Let's see, what else is going on with me? I uh, recently re-downloaded Morrowind. Gonna be... I've never done a modded playthrough, so I'm actually gonna do that. I might get a whole bunch of, like, mods to increase the visual effects and play it again in, in a fine edition. get some fancy shinies and whatnot. Has anybody um, seen the new Gloom Spike Gets rules, or I guess the new, the more recent ones? And can you tell me, how did Shrogs end up in the mail hurtling towards me as we speak? It's a big collection of Rockhold, Shroguts, and I think a Dankhold. And I've heard a lot of people say a lot of praises about uh, the Squigs and how they came out. Not so much about the Shroguts. Trogs are awesome. Nice. Are you going to live stream your play through Morrowind? Um, is that something you'd be interested in? I would. I mean, it's it has to be its own thing. Like, I'm going to have, like, its own thumbnail and schedule, probably. But uh, I did not know that that was a thing people wanted to watch. Frogs are awesome, pretty survivable, and they hit real good. Nice. Just so happens that's what I'm in the market for. <laughs> yes, I, um... They have an innate ward, and their regeneration happens every hero phase now. And just happens. No roll. Oh, very cool. Was it only your hero phase before? Is that what I was... I'm just going to re-strengthen some of the orange here. Just so it doesn't look washed out when we come back over. Okay, now I think the last things that I am seeing for this particular layer that I am at. I'll have the rope. Yep, only years before, if my memory serves. Right on. That's crazy. I mean, it's, when I say that's crazy, I mean, that's a crazy uh, upgrade. Oops. 
Um, Pixies! Oh yeah, dude. I'm telling you, this this is a this is a banger list. My wife and I are very frequently out on the uh, back porch, just chilling, listening to this, watching the birds and kids fall off skateboards. <laughs> you got to find your own amusement in Iowa. I was just curious, as I know some YouTubers that do that. Oh, cool. I, uh, I very much... Morrowind was an important game for me. Very much so. I was playing it during a very rough time in my childhood, and it was just the escape that a young Doug needed. Both sides. Yeah, almost. It was also one of the first games that like really bonded my brother and I. Because I guess it was one of those times like you know as you're getting older because he's like two years older than me. It, it, we started playing it right where I hit that age where I started to be like creative, and by that I mean. You know, there's that age in, in kid development where, like, they start to be able to put things together on their own. So, for example, stacking magic effects in that game. It let you break the game in a, in a very fundamental way with, like, boosting attributes and how to get people to attack you and engage with things. And so, like, it was a sandbox for me as a kid to, like, really play around. And I think that it was a very, a big part of developing that part of, like, putting things together in that way, yeah. For most of the shrooms I'm doing, I paint them like an ivory, and then I go over them with ethermatic blue, because I want a very dead simple glowing blue mushroom. That's all I want. Three D twelve bludgeoning. <laughs> <laughs> I um I had to stop cuz the bugs were just getting too much for me to enjoy it but for a while there I was playing um Knights of the Old Republic like they re-released it on Switch and it just don't buy it guys if you have already that's cool but it just has a ton of bugs that they're not addressing. Anywho, but it got me back into like seeing some of those old school uh, RPG terms of like the different kinds of, of combat damage that you could get. And there were shields for energy versus ion versus physical damage. It was cool. I was like, oh, this is a nice little blast from the past. I had that experience with Mass Effect, so I don't... Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. He is coming along. So, what I'm going to do now is... Do I have any paint left here? Hey, I'm going to fix this tooth that I missed. Man, I guess he can tell what side of his face I favor. Missed a bunch over here. <laughs> Doug's a nice guy, but if you want to get on his good side... Let him see your left side of your face. That's all. That's all he remembers, apparently. <laughs> Man, Mass Effect. Yeah. But yeah, the, the bugs just became too much for me to enjoy myself. I was like, I, I'm done. The game crashed way too many times. There was like, I played all through Knights of the Republic 1. Because you buy them like in a two-pack. Kind of like a collector's edition type thing. So I played all the way through one, and the second one, and that was despite bugs, but it was a good nostalgia shot. <laughs> and then when it got to the second one, I was like, I just can't, y'all. This is just... Yeah. 
And I'm just picking out some of the areas with this orange. Throw just a dot of water in there. KOTOR is a great game. Sadly, I never played KOTOR 2. Well, that was my thing. I never did either. I never did either. And I was like, oh man, this is going to be epic because I'm going to replay this game that I love from my childhood. And I did, but it was like not terribly fun about it. And then the sequel was that I was excited to. Like, I made all the same decisions that I remember making as a kid. I was like, I want to see, you know, what the consequences of this are. I don't know. And then I gave up. And I'm like, well, you know what? Advanced Wars Black Hole Rising 2 is always there for me. Which is another game that I also very much love. That really introduced me to the idea of like turn-based tactics games in general. Um, There we go. But yes, I uh, am back to Advanced Wars, and what else have I been playing? Oh, well, re-downloading more Windows. I'm still in the process of getting all my mods that I want set up. The ones I'm really looking for are just like skin textures and stuff. I don't want to change gameplay. Besides, outside of bug fixes. Nice. I like it. It looks all dirty and gross and worn, especially as this orange starts to dry. That's what I want. I want it to be orange, but I want it to look like crappy orange, you know? <laughs> oh man, Advance Wars 2 is still a great game. Oh yeah, they, they re-released it for the Switch, and that is one that is like a... I mean, they didn't re-release it, they remastered it. So it is like a, from a ground up redesign of some of the coding and stuff like that. And that game is just, I love it. I love it so much. Let me ask you this, Robin, who's your favorite CEO? If you could have any of them. Like, uh, if you could, I guess, play as one if you're fave. Let's do it that way. For me, it tends to be Colin or Max. Colin, if you don't know, he is basically whoever you choose your commanding officer gives you buffs or minuses because everybody kind of uses the same type of units, even though there's different icons. But like X characters tanks would be better than another characters. Maybe their ranged attacks are better. That kind of a thing. Um, ooh, I'm going to ask you about ESO here in a second. But yeah, just the kind of leader you pick dramatically affects what abilities they have access to or what they're good at. And Collins is the best, which is that his units are 10% worse than everybody else's. But they also cost 10% less. And so you just you just immediately like feel yourself become the commissar of an Imperial Guard regiment. <laughs> it's just like, go die harder as you're throwing all these cheap dudes at them. Oh yeah, it's so good. I like this guy. I like where he's at. Let him sit for just a hot bit. Let's see. Oh, you know what? He does need some washes on the, the mask and stuff. What was I thinking? Okay, Robin. Tell me about ESO. What kind of game is it? Can you describe it comparing to others? I know it's not like Morrowind or whatever. 
I love Max as the kid though. Max is the best as, as a kid. If you don't know, his thing is like, anytime you do direct combat, so like you have a tank walk up to another enemy tank and you shoot them, he is better at that than the enemies. But he also like, his artillery is absolute trash. Like he just can't, can't do anything outside of three feet directly from his face. Oh yeah, it's so fun. Cause then you feel like you're just an orc. You're just like, ah, ram, 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 ram. <laughs> See dark blue, where are you? Brown wash, here we go. Elder Scrolls Online? Yes, yes. I know I know that ESO is Elder Scrolls Online, but like what kind of game? I think we got some uh <laughs> it's probably say probably why i love work so much <laughs> yes uh looks like we got two conversations going so i asked what your favorite co is which is character that you can use in uh advanced wars 2 and then in addition to that we were talking about elder scrolls online if you could explain the, the, the kind of not the premise of the game necessarily but you know roughly what it's about I had never, I love Elder Scrolls and I've only ever heard uh, mixed at best reviews of ESO and usually it's a lot of people like, oh, they don't respect the lore anymore, which is like, I don't, okay. I feel like half my job is just fielding questions about how X game company just doesn't honor the lore that they have anymore. And that's fine. You could be upset about that. You don't have to like whatever they change into, but just it's more the folks who like don't seem to understand that change is just going to happen. Whatever game company you switch to following is also going to have to change one day. <laughs> but yes, Elder Scrolls Online, I see pictures for it. Unfortunately, my laptop is a bit on the sad side right now, so probably not really much gaming on the go for me. My desktop is great, but during the move, we actually, um, the screen on my nice laptop that I, oh, I was so bummed, man. I've had that laptop. That was the first thing I bought with, with patron money. Uh, basically during the move, a shelf fell and crushed it. And so the computer works. I just need to take it in to get the LCD screen worked or fixed rather. But I was, oh, I was so devastated that day. I just kind of sat down for a bit and I was like, I need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep well, man. So much content. PVP, PVE. You said guild. So I'm assuming there's some kind of cooperative play. Which is probably what interests me the most, if I'm honest, but... Heck yeah, dude. So he's at the same level, pretty much as these guys, which is to say... Um, we just need to do a highlight on the teals and on the metals, but his metals are pretty minimal compared to the rest of them. I love them. Kill these extended family. Hmm. Never ran out of stuff to do or people to play with. That's awesome, man. I was only interested in that game when they were like, we're going back to, to Morrowind or Vardenville, right? The island that Morrowind takes place on. And I was like, oh, yeah, I want to be there for that. <laughs> and that was it. That was the last time I checked in. Okay, now we've got our last mission of the day. 
before Sick Doug goes and takes a nap and resets his voice. Here we go. I have Neutral Gray by Monument Hobbies. And we're going to take all of these little nerds that we painted earlier. All that sloppy paint is now dried. And now we're going to dry brush. Fix up some of the ends. I've already got the Loon Trine and 20 Squig Hoppers done so far. And then this will bring me up in points to a good, I mean, I could probably have a small, a reasonable demo game here with these. Four man dungeons, 12 man trials. I don't like that, I might check that out. Robin, hit me up on, on Discord. Um, Whenever they do their next sale or whatever for it, I might check it out. The Knights of Dagathur. <laughs> I was a part of a web group that was uh, Fargoth-er, and I, I adored it so much. That was like forever ago. That was like back in chat room days. Feels... Uh, Corgus Coil, I think the Fire Slayers need a refresh. I defs agree. I don't... I think if they just reapproached it from kind of a different direction, it could just be a lot more than the sum of its parts. Like, there are so many more interesting things that they've written about than a patriarchal mercenary fam. It's like, no, nah, man, take those dudes and put them in a weird way. Like, go explore some stuff. Go put those, you know, if you're going to keep those traditional values, put them in, in terrible contexts. What does that look like when, I don't know, one of your dudes is crazy with Urgold and, like, losing his garbage? Oh, yeah. Give me some tension. Give me some stuff. Like, just as we wanted the Stormcast to fart, to fart feeling, to start feeling replications, replications of their reforging. <laughs> if I sound like I'm glitching, I do this when I'm recording as well. It's just become a natural instinct. I learned early, if you're ever recording something, like you have to give a speech or something like that, or even if it's for like an ad or whatever, if you stumble on a word, just just redo that word don't have to like stop and reset the whole sentence just that one just that word get used to it get comfortable so that's why I, I make fun of myself whenever i hit you with a weird accent but also i also i was raised partially in new jersey and partially in texas so i don't feel like i stood a chance when it comes to learning english <laughs> I had to explain what the word zhuzh meant to a bunch of hit Texans, and that was fun. Oh, yeah, I've got to give it a zhuzh. What? Nine-year-old crime-ridden Doug. <laughs> give me his shoes. I didn't see you on the animosity campaign this year, Doug. Uh, I did not join. We actually moved that month, um, which is just... It's a real bummer. I feel like I did that last year, too, but we have had to move a lot. Basically. Ah, alarm clock. Um, I'm sorry, that distracted me. Yes, we were moving that time, and I didn't want to commit to anything with those guys, because uh, last year, or the year before that, we had a death in the family, and that screwed up my coverage of animosity. And I, I just... I... I felt mortified that I was giving people a bad experience with doing stuff with Doug. Like when I say like, hey, I'm going to cover animosity on my channel. Like they were so excited and then to have it fall through. I just, I felt inordinately uh, frustrated with myself by that. I was just letting them down. And so, uh, 
I've been more careful to not agree to stuff unless I'm like ready to go. Also, the problem with the animosity stuff is that because it develops in real time, it's not a thing where I could work ahead and really do much. I could do the introduction video ahead of time. That's about it. It's a thousand years before Morrowind. The cantons of Avect are under construction. Oh, is there still time to tell them it's a terrible city and they should not do that until they can develop exterior open cells? <laughs> I love Morrowind so much. That is the worst city. It is the worst. Everything looks the same. Oh, maybe if I get some mods in there, it'll spice it up a bit. That sounds kind of nice, actually. But yes, I uh, when I say I felt inordinately bad, like I have this this thing. Whenever I meet folks in real life, as as I hope to meet each and every one of you sometime, um. I want every single person that meets me in real life to walk away going, holy shit, that was a lot of fun. Pardon the language, I know I try to keep it minimal. But, um, because that's, it is not just my brand, but it's just how I want people to feel. I want you to feel happy and stoked. And when I when I fail at that, I feel like I poorly represent myself, whatever, I just I kick myself real hard, probably harder than I should. But I do that because when I was younger, I met, um, he, he ran a War Machine and Hordes podcast that I really liked. And I met him in real life after years of being a follower and fan. And he was the biggest douche. And he didn't want to give me the time of day. Didn't hardly acknowledge me. And I was just like, man. I don't know. I've never understood the people who don't value. Like, if you have any level of fame, not valuing the people who give you that doesn't make any sense. It seems so egregiously counterintuitive and nonsensical. I'm like, what? Uh, let's see. 7 p.m. in the UK was not expecting to find a live stream, but here I am. Hey, we're just wrapping up here, but... Feel free to go back. And has anyone asked your thoughts on the new Stormcast hero yet? The Ionis mini? Uh, I guess no one's really asked my thought other than to say we're all very excited to get into the lore for him. Um, but those are about as deep as my thoughts go at this point. <laughs> but he does look super rad. some nice looking squigs just started my gloom spite with Dawnbringer boxes oh cool yes i went from man i think i want to start a gloom spite gets army to a week later having like wrangled up 2500 points of it through various like just cleaning out my closet trades and whatever Forgot about the actual squig herder boys. You know, what with them being the least important part of the unit. I don't know if that's true, but when you see a wall of squigs coming at you, no one's worried about the herders, <laughs> was my point. I need to learn really quickly what this army does, though. Like, I still haven't actually gone out and gotten the battle tome for it. I haven't been feeling well, and it's just taking forever to get out. But, like, I know roughly what they do, right? I mean, the rules didn't... They did change, but they didn't, like, the concept of the army didn't change, so... I'm not too worried about that.
you ever get across the pond to America, I'll drop you a message. Please do. I met a Game of Thrones uh, actor that was like that. That was like, the, oh, if you ever pop in, come say hi. Yeah, please do. Just bought myself that box set with Trug and six rock cuts. Nice. Did we know he was in the realm of death looking to cure the reforging snagging? So we know that that was a focus of his because... In his early lore, back in the Rome Gate Wars, he would have terrible reoccurring like nightmares and visions of Nagash screaming at him of like, this is when they first introduced the idea of Stormcast having, you know, uh, reforging or whatever. But in his estimation, every time he died, uh, Nagash was like tearing at his soul and that's why he didn't get it all back. Or at least that was his vision. And so, I think it makes perfect sense that he would be there. Um, we know from other places that like, Shayish is really the, the epicenter of research when it comes to the reforging process just because of the nature, you know, it's death. The more they understand it, the more that they can manipulate it kind of deal. So I know there's that. I know um, we learned from oh, man. Astria Soul Bright, I think, was the character. I could be wrong. They all kind of blend together because they don't talk about them after they release them in a battle tome. Um, but she hunts and studies vampires because while they don't want to become vampires, any and all knowledge about the afterlife, arcane, and resurrection is all useful. I like running six trogs in my cruel boys with a break of boss and a Meyer brute to break. Up. Oh, cool. skin so I do plague bearer flesh rather than the orc skin and then if you want to make it a bit brighter you can go ochre and camo to make it a stronger color anyway Oh man, this is Darzin, you'll be in my heart. Yep. Yeah, we uh, we love this list, this playlist. I, I linked it up above if anyone's looking for it. Phil Collins is catnip for white people. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but I love this playlist because you know, you'll have this on in the car. And we were babysitting our uh, nephew. You have this in the car and he's like oh i know this song this is fun blah 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 and he'll kind of tune out and lose attention and then it's like it'll switch to i don't know some super inappropriate song um but it's just since it's just a lo-fi version they don't know and you're just like oh yeah i do like rocking out to uh the lo-fi version of i don't know i talked about creep earlier but uh, she effing hates me oh, by puddle of mud like all those songs where you just would never listen to when there's a kid around <laughs> at least as a responsible and an uncle we're, we're still in the brownie point earning phase with the uh, with mama bear so we don't push too far Oh. 
too accurate. <laughs> Him and Steely Dan. Two things you can play. Steely Dan if you only want to attract stepfathers. We're just going to wrap these guys up. Because the next time I sit down, I'd love to be able to just go around and knock out the trim of the bases. Or the rim of the bases, not the trim. Tell you what, since this... Since we're bearing down, let's go to our playlist here. Let's get some good songs here. How would you go about making a Phil Collins faction? Frosted, great question. I'm so happy to answer that for you. Um, let's see. Give me pick a song first so I can dedicate all of my brain power to that. Okay, I like this one. I promise I'm not ignoring you. Let's see. I'll do this one. Teardrop. God, there's so many songs in this list. I can't find the one I'm looking for. Here we go. Okay, how would I go about building a Phil Collins faction? Um, to start off, the thematic um, inspiration is going to obviously come from the Roman army, right? That's just the meme status that we have about men and what they know about. So uh, we're going to go. Again, we're trying to make catnip for white people in, in an army. So we got the Roman aesthetic. Uh, let's throw in some killer heraldry. Um, I want them to be audio based, like noise marines, but for fantasy. Phil Collins equals Lumineth. <laughs> no, because here's here's why I'll push back on that. On Phil Collins being Lumineth. Phil Collins works in every situation. Okay? If you're at a party, you're hanging out, you're rocking to some of those like power ballads or whatever. If you're alone with your significant other on a stormy night where it's cold and you have nothing to cuddle each other, in the air tonight is your song. Like it fits everything. Whereas I feel like <laughs> I feel like the Lumineth army like comes to a grinding halt every time they release a new rule set because none of it works for them. <laughs> but what about this? It's broken. <laughs> Deal with it. Knick <laughs> knack, patty wax on six. <laughs> I think uh, a hallmark of their design would be almost in the same vein as Stormcast, where like they don't need a lot of buffs. Phil Collins does not need assistance. He does not need you to go out and buy your stupid fancy speakers. 
The man is, is is born of class and character. He can project his his voice as long as loud as it needs to be. And if you think it's not loud enough, ask your significant other. I bet she loves it. <laughs> uh, it's being goofy now. Sick brain. Let's see, I would have probably, yeah, spell names would definitely be song titles, right? In the Air Tonight Unleashes a Miasma. Um, oh, you know what? Instead of sub-faction rules, what if he had, like, eras? So, for example, this is your um, Genesis era, and so it'll have rules for Genesis when he was a part of the band there. So now it's less about individual characters representing Phil Collins, but more just his vibe. Because let's be honest, he walked out of that band the winner. But if you get into some of the eras where it's like... Uh, what was another big one? That's All, right? Where it's that kind of like harder beat. Maybe it's a more intense thing. Place strategy, land of confusion, a four up. <laughs> You're no son of mine. <laughs> if you could watch, yeah, I have, um, not in the description here, but any of my other videos, yeah, you can go pop into the uh, descriptions of those and it will have all the stuff. I need to, I, I had to reset my streaming software today, and so it kind of messed up with all the pre pre-made notifications or whatever but yes i do have a, a discord um mostly here on youtube so although for those of you who are curious i am going to be start doing stuff on tiktok because i enjoy making videos and that's my favorite platform for them nothing's right i'm torn Uh, let's see. Yeah, Tarzan soundtrack. That could be its whole. That could be a whole thing. Yep, that's a great era when he, when he got bought by Disney for some reason for like a couple movies. Oh no! Wait, what am I thinking of? I'm thinking of who did stuff for Lion King. Now I'm getting, I'm getting them all confused. I remember there was one night where my wife and I were out bar hopping and we asked a girl at Walgreens who was far too young to know any of these artists. We're like, okay, who's better, Elton John or Phil Collins? She was like, what, um, but like, what's the, what's the metric? And I was like, there is no metric. You need to just answer the question. <laughs> and she was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's okay, I threw a tip of the tip jar. Elton John, Lion King was Elton, thank you. This is going to be our last song of the day, friends. DJ Doug needs to go take a nap. <laughs> All I know is there should be a gorilla on the drums.
And here we go. Okay, get that done. Hey, um, I'll just chat here idly while I'm finished with these last few guys. Any of you guys play, um, oh, what is it? Outer Worlds, is that what it's called? Yes, Outer Worlds. Oh, my super douche neighbor is back. He has a motorcycle. Okay, I'm just going to rant about my neighbor here for a bit because... He's the worst. He has a, a, a bike, and it's so funny because he is a tiny little guy, okay? Uh, very tiny little man, and he just really struggles with this motorcycle. And I know in his mind, he thinks he is the coolest shit, guys. Like, I, I know this. But in reality, it takes everything my wife and I have to not just laugh directly in his face. He's so teeny that like when he walks the bike out, it looks like a child trying to get on a like their bicycle for the first time. And then one time uh, he was out in front of us and he couldn't get the kickstand down. And so we just heard this grown man just being like, oh, come on, uh, what's going on? And like this high pitched whiny voice. Oh man, we were dying. We laughed for hours. He has a big like rider's jacket, which you should wear because in case you slide, it like has like protective armor on the inside or whatever. But it makes him look like a 12 year old when he's wearing it. And it's, oh, it's just the best. You guys have no idea how much joy that brings me. <laughs> I might be the only one, but when I think of coming in the air tonight, I think I think of Cadbury commercials that might just be me. Well, I can tell you it's not me, but I'm not gonna yuck your yum. Like Bob's Burgers when he tries to sell the bike. <laughs> yes, yes, it is it is that exact person. Yes, I had to think about that reference. It is that exact person. He's not a, a corporate guy. He is a local police officer, um, which just kind of makes it more funny and pathetic. But, but yes, yeah, so he doesn't have that same corporate guy vibe who doesn't understand motorcycle stuff, but it, it is that same lack of understanding of like oh buddy some people go to renaissance festivals to live out their fantasy you found a way to just do it every day on a motorcycle bud i'm not gonna burst your bubble Oh yes, we'll see. Anytime there's a Bob's Burgers reference, the answer is it's probably the best way to describe a situation. Okay, and with these guys done, we have our little grot forest. They need a little bit of a wash, but they're going to take some time. And then we'll just have to go around the rims with black. Actually, I can probably throw a little ethermatic blue and knock out those mushrooms. But then we we'll have a big unit of Squig herd done. Let me ask you this: If anyone is in the chat, Squig herd, are they good? Bad? What do they do? Do they kill neighbors? Oh, he's gone. For example, he's too tiny to walk his bike into the garage. So at like ten at night, when he comes in, 
to move the bike. So you have to like open the garage door and then go in to, to do that. He has to get off his bike, open the garage door, and then rev it incredibly loud to get the thing moving again because he's too teeny. And it's just so cute. I don't think it would end well, but if we ever get into an argument, I'm just going to go boop on his head. <laughs> if you guys have not seen me in person, I am almost six foot four. Uh, I am overweight, but I'm broad shouldered. I, I am hashtag real life Hodor. <laughs> and so him standing next to me would be, would be very cute. Also, he has the, what is it? The mustache that goose had from top gun that's his face and it's it's unsettling anyway thanks for neighbor talk i'll hang out with you all very very soon and i'll catch you let me get my mic refixed again but i'll hang out